in Muzak. But it was not until 2003, that's the end of the quotation, but it was not until 2003 that Ireland's new condition was affirmed symbolically in the center of its capital city. For years there had been public debate about what would replace Nelson's pillar <coughs> at the center of Dublin's O'Connell Street up to the GPO. The pillar, honoring Admiral Lord Nelson, hero of Britain and the British Empire, had been blown up by Republicans in 1966. Prominent among the suggestions for its replacement were a statue of Piers the O'Connell, or a statue of both, to join the other statues lining the street, a monument honoring the Easter Rising, or a monument commemorating generally the ultimately victorious Irish freedom struggle. In the late 1990s, Dublin City Council decided to erect instead a spire of stainless steel, 221 meters high, three meters wide at the base, 15 centimeters at the apex, and signifying literally how right William Buckley was nothing. <laughs> Completed in 2003, it affirms the nation's condition <laughs> today. <laughs> it's almost shaped like an exclamation mark. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, while the ancient Ga rural Gaelic Catholic Irish nation, heir of a long freedom struggle, recedes in memory, we live amid the furniture of national nothingness. <coughs> Irish men who died fighting Britain's wars have been commemorated on a par with those who died for yeah. Irish freedom. The nation speaking, never mind not Gaelic, a foreign English, shaped largely by American films, TV series, and pop songs, with some input from British television and newspapers. The Irish Catholic Church, discredited by its tolerance of pedophile priests, under verbal attack from anti-Catholic Irishmen echoing the Ian Paisley of old and the old ascendancy. Those two cardinals of the correctorate, O'Toole and Brown, imprinted in the airwaves, habitually using the adjective Irish with the same negative connotation as did Englishmen for centuries. While exploding in a raving vocabulary of hideous, appalling, outrageous, horrific, disgraceful, of our exports, the healthiest part of the Republic's economy, 90% coming from foreign-owned firms. Uniquely in Europe, and for the first time in a century, Irish magazine shops not offering a single home-produced magazine of ideas. A government, passive in the face of the world, going now, now along with some action led by others, and now again following other leaders. It's easy to be sour and dislike. But it's not sufficient. Changes nothing. Confirms national defeat. The needed response is to ponder and discuss what to do. Is it to try again? Our first attempt to make Ireland a normal nation was not, its economic support, a bad effort. Might a second attempt with some lessons learned succeed? First, let it be said that no normal European nation has gone through history with its initial act of intellectual self-determination, self-definition, fully intact. I mean with the valued distinguishing self-identity that was defined by that act, maintained fully intact. As history progressed and circumstances changed, every normal